What's up again everybody? Now that Crucible of War has been out for a little bit, I want to talk about five cards that I very much enjoy. These are five of my favorite cards from the set, and I'm not putting them in any particular order. I don't think the last one that I talk about is the best, or the first one that I talk about is the best per se. These are just five cards that I really like. It may be that I like the design of them, it may be that I'm really excited about what they could bring uh, as far as variety to the game. Heck, it may even be that I just love the art more than anything in the set. My point in saying all this is it's not necessarily going to be a list of the five most powerful cards in this set, though I will say some of them are more powerful and some of them are less powerful. You'll see that here in a moment. Before we dive in though, I want to say if you want to see more flesh and blood content and if you just want just to support the channel, then feel free to watch more of these videos, like and subscribe any ones that you enjoy, and leave a comment telling me why you enjoy them. All of those things help support the channel in a variety of different ways, both in person for other people to see the game and also just telling the uh, YouTube algorithm to make this video more accessible to others. So if you want to support me, go ahead and do all of those things. We are currently sitting at a whopping 1,844 subscribers, which is far and away further than I ever expected to be this year. So you guys are already killing it, and I'm so thankful. All right, let's get started. The first of my favorite cards in this set is this one. This is Stamp of Authority. It is a Guardian Action Aura. It is a Majestic that costs three to play, but it can also pick pitch blue, which is really good in Guardian, um, so it pitches for three. It can defend for three if you wanted it to, and it says, Wind Stamp Authority enters the arena. If you have two or more cards in your pitch zone with cost three or greater, your hero gains plus one intellect until the end of the turn. So instead of drawing up your hand size to four, you draw to five, which is so cool. Then the second ability, which is arguably crazier, says while Stamp Authority is in the arena, attack action card effects don't trigger when they hit. And then at the beginning of your next action phase, you're gonna destroy it. But for an entire turn, you can just look at your ninja opponent and say, yeah, all of those effects that are on that card, yeah, they're all gone, <laughs> which is so powerful. And this is one of those cards that makes me go, man, Guardian now has this like huge control piece that's Guardian specific, and that speaks to an archetype that Guardian now can play towards. Whereas before, they had some of those effects um, they were sort of bundled into uh, like attacks. The keyword ability for Guardian kind of had some effects where it would prevent your opponent from doing certain things. And they had a few auras as well, but nothing as powerful or as pervasive or as hard to deal with, I should say, as Stamp Authority. So Stamp Authority is a really cool card, and I love the fact that it pushes this control archetype for Guardian. The Guardian player gets to control their opponent's uh, choices and control what their, basically what their cards are doing in the sense that they just make their cards not do anything except what attack that they're attacking for and then when play swings back to the guardian's turn they just hit you in the face with something super powerful like guardians tend to do in my opinion a very very cool card plus look at the art on that card dude just slamming down that stamp that's so cool next is a card that you might have guessed made my list and it did indeed make my list i find this card super interesting this is Zen State. It's a ninja token, so you can only create this. You can't actually put this in your deck and play it. And it's created by going down the combo path and really getting uh, Find Center to trigger. Once you get Find Center to connect, then uh, you create a Zen State token. Why do I like this card so much, or why is it so interesting to me? Well, let's read it first. It says Zen State enters the arena with one balance counter on it. At the beginning of your action phase, destroy it unless you can remove a balance counter from it. So again, if you're thinking about this, you create it, and then you take your opponent's turn, and then it comes back to your turn. You take off that balance counter, you go through your turn, your opponent's turn, and then the following turn after that. So two turns after you've created it, it will destroy. So you have the effect here for two turns. And what is the effect? Well, whenever your hero would be dealt damage, prevent one damage that source would deal. Why do I love this card? Oh my god, there's so many reasons. Well, first of all, the art is insane. The art's so beautiful. In foil, the art's even better. But besides the art, what did Ninja have that equates to this? literally nothing. There is nothing that is ninja specific that ninjas could kind of use 
to do any effect like this. There's like no, almost no damage mitigation whatsoever available to Ninja. And now we have a damage mitigation effect that lasts for two turns that is generally effective against a ton of different classes and a ton of different heroes. This is a really solid piece in a ninja versus ninja matchup because your ninja opponent who's attacking with um, both of the Kadachis all of a sudden just do no damage when the Kadachis go through. You don't even have to block from hand. If I guess you would technically want to block if they, you know, had, if you thought that they had like a razor reflex in hand or anything like that, where they're going to try to stack up, or if they're benefiting from something connecting and then using that to snowball. But the fact that you can just say, "Nah, it's fine. I'll take zero instead of wasting a card from your hand to block and try to prevent that setup is just crazy. I imagine this would be pretty solid against any class that tries to go wide to any degree. I mean, it's probably not good against like exactly guardian, but anything that deals arcane damage so like wizard and rune blade that are trying to pop you for little bits at a time or maybe like snowball these big hits those are mitigated as you go which is really cool ranger like the red line ranger that's trying to slam down like arrow after arrow or maybe you just slam down one big arrow that that would be the archetype that wouldn't be as good but if you're trying to go like the go wide ranger this is like really good against that this would be pretty decent against uh, one of the two new archetypes that were given to both brute and warrior where they both have two weapons now so all in all if this triggers and actually gets out into the field it's going to do work in most every game that you play and if you're playing kitchen table with like less than optimized decks but you have the capacity to make a zen state token it'll be really really good now at the highest competitive levels it may not make the cut but i don't know because i'm not the highest level competitive player so if you are and you're watching this let me know in a comment below what you think about the zen state effect and if you think its effect is powerful enough of mitigation to uh, to make it the cut in higher level tournament play. Next up is a card that many people have on their favorites list, and it's on mine as well because it is just amazing in every form and fashion. This is Shiana Diamond Gemini, a shapeshifter young hero with four intellect, 20 health. It's the legendary, or one of the two, I should say, legendaries in the set, and it says you may have specialization cards of any hero in your deck. At the beginning of your action phase, Shiana becomes a copy of target hero until the start of your next turn, and gains cards you own are the class of your hero in addition to the other class types that are on the card. First of all, the art on this card is incredible. I want to personally thank the artist for putting this together because it is drop dead gorgeous, and the foiling that they put on this just out of this world. And whoever is doing the bordering at Legend Story Studios needs to have just a firm handshake, or I guess like an elbow bump because of COVID, but like some sort of pat on the proverbial back because the bordering on this card is absolutely incredible as well. Everything about the aesthetics of this card just makes me so incredibly happy. The ability on the card is also super interesting, particularly if you're playing in the multiplayer format, Ultimate Pit Fight, because each turn you can choose a different opponent to sort of copy the uh, abilities of, which to me seems really skill intensive with a little bit of luck mixed in because it's depending on how your deck is constructed. You could be lucky if you sit down to the table with your friends and, and they run heroes and decks that you can really take advantage of. And this is a hero that will only get better with time as more specialization cards are released. So this is one of those where if you open it, not only are you super excited because it's a legendary, but you're super excited to have it for the long term because there are so many more things that are going to be added to the card pool that this can take advantage of. So yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite cards in the set. And it was a card that I was really worried about when they sort of teased that there was going to be a shapeshifter hero that was a legendary, but I think they absolutely nailed it. Unfortunately, I'll probably never buy enough boxes to actually pull this card, but you know, maybe down the line I'll be able to uh, trade somebody out of theirs and have this card for myself. Okay, the next card is one you're probably not going to expect, but I absolutely love this card and I love what it represents for the future of the game. This is Talishar, the Lost Prince, a generic weapon, sword, two-handed. It's a rare in the set. It attacks for four, and it says once per turn action, pay two resources. Put a rust counter on Talishar the Lost Prince, and then you get to attack for four, obviously. At the beginning of your end phase, if Talishar the Lost Prince has three or more rust counters on it, you destroy it. So what do I like this card? 
I mean, generally it's not very powerful and for the most part, you're not really gonna wanna run this over whatever your hero already has in their class at their disposal. So why is this on the list? It is for the simple fact that for the first time, we now have a generic weapon that can be played by literally any class. And that is something I so want to keep happening going forward. If there is a generic card pool of weapons and equipment that can be shared and pulled out whenever you want for any class, it's gonna make deck building so much more interesting and so much more varied, particularly if we get a mixture of really, really strong generic weapons that come with some sort of like a significant drawback for certain classes or just weapons that are really underpowered but might be interesting in a vacuum when you do this or that. I think the design space here is almost unlimited and I'm so glad that they've started the whole process of opening it up with Talishar the Lost Prince. As I said, it's not the most powerful thing in the world. It's attacking for four, which you can get in a lot of other classes. You have to pay two to do it, and after you attack three times with this, it's basically dead. But again, it's really for me about the principle of it. I also do very much like the art, but the principle of creating a generic weapon and a generic weapon pool going forward has me so excited to keep seeing what comes out in the next set and the next set and the next set. All right, I gotta admit, I kind of lied. At the beginning of the video, I said that I didn't put these in any particular order, but I will say this, I saved my favorite card, or is it cards, for last. These are the cards that are most exciting to me, that I'm most excited to play with, and just looking at the first card itself, I keep saying plural because I'm grouping two cards together because they both kind of represent the same thing. Looking at these cards just makes me happy and makes me want to play the game. And this, you may have guessed, as I've mentioned previous to this, how excited I was for these, I guess, two cards. This is Kasai Centauri Sword and the Centauri Saber. Kasai is a young warrior hero that has an ability that says your second sword attack each turn costs one less. And it also says at the beginning of your end phase, if you have attacked two or more times with weapons this turn, create a copper token for each weapon attack that is hit. And the weapon is a warrior weapon sword one-handed, attacks for two, and then it's a once per turn action, pay a resource and attack. If Centauri Saber is defended by an attack action card, it gains plus one until the end of the turn. I love these cards. I love these cards. I love these cards. And I love these cards because I like the fact that we have a brand new way of playing Warrior, a class that was in the very first set that has already been really good, that has already had cards sort of built in to do some of the things that you can now do with two weapons back when we only had the Dawnblade Dorinthia setup. And the fact that we've been given a solid little Centauri Saber that attacks for two, and you can run two of them, and they have a slight upside, and you only have to pay one to attack with it. In a class that has ways to give weapons go again, oh, just has me so excited to play this. Both with Dorinthia and here with Kasai. And I really like Kasai because she pushes the warrior archetype within Blitz. And as someone who's incredibly excited to play Blitz games and hopefully play them with other people soon at game stores, I am still very certain that Kasai Centauri Sellsword will be my first Blitz deck, and I will be running her, obviously, with the Centauri Saber. These cards, when combined together, have me most excited to play this game right now, and it has not waned since they have been spoiled. So I know I said that I was going to tell you my five favorite cards, and really they were all kind of even keel and none was above the other, but I lied. This is totally the two cards out of the six, I guess, that I've shown that have me literally the most excited for the game than I've ever been. So that's my list. Those are five cards, or is it six? Ah, who cares? It's six cards. That's my six card list. Those are my favorites from the set. What are your favorite cards from this set? Let's have a little game. Why don't you post in the comment below with your five or six, if you want to, since I did it, I cheated. So your six favorite cards from this set. It could just be because you love the art. It could be because you think they're incredibly powerful. It could be because they look really fun to play with. But let me know in a comment below what your six are. Also, sound off on what you think about mine. Is there something that I missed about a certain card? Let me know in a comment below. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching. Thank you.